Throughout history, infantry has often been considered the backbone of an army, and this belief stayed true across the three major wars between the Global Defense Initiative and the Brotherhood of Nod. Whether it be assaulting enemy bases, defending strategic positions, garrisoning neutral buildings, or even capturing enemy ones, there was always a role for the tried and true boots on the ground. Now, before getting further into the video, I do want to quickly preface that I'll be focusing specifically on Nod's human infantry units and not their cyborgs, or the Tiberium-infused super soldiers and renegade, as I've already done a video on them. A link for that video will be at the end screen of this one. While many in GDI had always painted the Brotherhood as a disjointed terrorist organization, the reality was that Nod was well organized and well funded. This was largely due to the fact that the Brotherhood had established efficient extraction and refining methods for Tiberium well before GDI, which generated ample wealth for the organization. In addition, the Brotherhood's secret connections with various defense contractors in the United States meant it had access to modern equipment to outfit its soldiers. During the early years of the First Tiberium War, most infantry units in the Brotherhood of Nod wore a variation of the Pazgit uniform, PASGIT was an acronym for Personal Armor System for Ground Troops. GDI Infantry wore these uniforms as well. The main difference between theirs and the Brotherhood's was the camouflage. GDI opted for six-pattern desert camo, whereas the Brotherhood made use of urban camo. All the Brotherhood's infantry were trained at a building called the Hand of Nod. The structure was a sight to behold, partially embedded in a large rock, with a hand grasping the earth. Much of the actual interior of the structure was located underground, where the Brotherhood trained new recruits and indoctrinated them with the teachings of Cain. The Minigunner was the Brotherhood's basic infantry unit, tasked with engaging GDI units head-on, ideally in great numbers. The manual states that the Nod Minigunner was armed with an M16 rifle. However, the sidebar cameo of the unit, as well as other photos, shows the Minigunner armed with a 9mm Calico M951, the manual calls the Calico a, quote, GAL-3 Eliminator, which was the standard issue rifle for GDI minigunners. So basically, the Eliminator is portrayed by the Calico M951, probably due to the gun's sci-fi appearance. Either way, Nod was always willing to make use of any weapons they could get their hands on, even if it meant taking them from the dead bodies of GDI soldiers. Minigunners needed to be spread out when fighting vehicles such as tanks, which could easily run over an entire squad if they were bunched up. Nod's rocket soldiers were better equipped to handle vehicles, as they were armed with an anti-tank weapon. Just like the minigunners, the manual description for their primary weapon differs from the in-game art representing the unit. The manual simply states that the rocket soldier is armed with, quote, light tow rockets, while the sidebar cameo and other images of the unit show the soldier armed with an M72 law. The remastered version of the cameo replaces the M72 with an AT-4 recoilless launcher. The remastered in-game unit matches the cameo with the AT-4 as well. Nod rocket soldiers also acted as cheap anti-air units, able to bring down GDI orcas and transport helicopters. The rocket soldiers achieved this by using the FIM-92 Stinger missile. While rocket soldiers were excellent anti-tank support for minigunners, they were also slower moving due to the heavy ordnance they carried. Caught out against a squad of enemy minigunners, the rocket soldiers stood no chance. The Brotherhood never adhered to UN restrictions against using incendiary or chemical weapons. Because of this, GDI frequently encountered Nod troops armed with flamethrowers. The flamethrowers were Nod's response to GDI's grenadiers, able to effectively take out groups of soldiers and burn buildings to the ground. Flamethrower troops needed to be spread out from each other, as the explosive death of one could kill others around him. In addition, any friendly troops caught in the flamethrower's line of fire could accidentally be killed. Thanks to Nod's experiments with Tiberium, their chem sprayer created a toxic cloud of Tiberium gas which, like the flamethrower, could quickly kill enemy infantry. This cloud was so corrosive that it could even damage light armor and buildings. The troops designated to carry these chem sprayers were called chem warriors. Thanks to the gas masks they wore, the chem warriors were immune to the effects of their own toxin, and could traverse a Tiberium field without suffering any ill effects. 
The ultimate warrior amongst the ranks of Nod's infantry units was the Commando. With their red berets, Commando stood out from all the other infantry. While a couple images show the Commando armed with a Mossberg 500 shotgun, their primary weapon was a Raptor .50 caliber rifle, with a long-range scope, bipod, and suppressor attachments. With this rifle, the Commando could easily pick off enemy infantry from a distance. In addition, the Commando carried plenty of C4 explosives. A single charge, when placed on an enemy structure, would bring it crumbling to the ground in seconds. Nod utilized their commandos for special operations missions, including the destruction of a mammoth tank facility in Tanzania, and the assassination of GDI's leading particle cannon research scientist, Dr. Wang Hu Chan, in Angola. Last, but certainly not least, was the engineer. Wearing civilian clothes, and equipped with a yellow hard hat, pipe wrench, and toolbox, the Nod engineer was tasked with capturing GDI base structures. Since engineers weren't armed, their protection was essential, especially since they moved slower in comparison to other Nod infantry units like the minigunner. Some engineers were even trained to commandeer and pilot enemy transport helicopters, or drive a harvester that was docked at a captured refinery. One engineer even captured a GDI Orca located in the Central African Republic, and used it to destroy a nearby village, allowing the Brotherhood to blame its destruction on GDI. As the First Tiberium War progressed, both the Brotherhood and GDI provided some of their infantry units with new equipment and weapons. Each side shifted toward equipping their soldiers with uniforms that featured a more distinct aesthetic. For the Brotherhood, this meant phasing out the urban camo Pazgate uniforms, with those sporting the organization's signature red and black colors. New designations and specialties were even assigned to some Nod soldiers, such as the Shotgun Trooper and Heavy Weapons Soldier. The Hand of Nod continued to play an important role in housing and training Brotherhood recruits. An alternate version of the structure was used. Though it still featured a hand grasping the earth, the rest of the building took on a more rectangular shape, with large glass windows at the back. I think it's worth going over the important aspects of this building and its primary facilities. A ramp led up to the main entrance. Inside was an entryway with two elevators, one that headed down to the underground portion of the structure, and the other which headed up to the roof. Atop the structure was a helipad, primarily used by transport helicopters to pick up and drop off troops. A door near the helipad led straight to the infirmary, where injured soldiers received medical attention. Back on the ground floor, past the entryway, was a memorial dedicated to all those who had died in service of the Brotherhood. At the back of the structure, where the glass windows were located, was a foyer with some computer systems. Beyond that room, down a hallway toward the middle of the structure, was the command and control room, with the master control terminal located in another room nearby. Destroying this terminal would effectively shut down the entire building. The underground portion of the structure was where Nod soldiers were trained and housed. Included were several rooms. The first was a mess hall for them to eat, and the second a barracks with many beds for sleeping, along with a couple of bathrooms nearby. There was a gym for the troops to work out. A training room with a dojo mat in the middle where recruits would learn hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. Near the gym was the armory where weapons and equipment were stored. An elevator near the armory led further down where a couple of interrogation rooms were located. Near these rooms was a lab with a couple of morgue rooms. The last room, located back up the elevator near the armory, was an artificial training course. This area included a river, trees, and grass. A couple of towers were used by Nod officers to observe the recruits engaged in mock battles below them. Throughout the interior of the structure, there were automated machine guns hanging from the ceilings, ready to eliminate any non-Brotherhood personnel in the building. As for the troops themselves, the Nod soldier was the most basic. Considered standard assault infantry, Nod soldiers had basic combat training. The soldier wore red pants and a long sleeve shirt. A black flak vest, boots, and gloves were worn over their red clothing, along with elbow pads and shin guards. These soldiers were also given a helmet and mask to protect their entire face, though the mask would not protect them from the toxic effects of a Tiberium field. 
As for their primary weapon, the Nod Soldier was armed with a Raptor Automatic Assault Rifle. However, as seen in a couple of cutscenes, some Nod Soldiers were still armed with M16s. The Raptor had a fast rate of fire and a 100 round drum magazine. If there was no time to reload his rifle, the Nod Soldier would switch to his sidearm. This sidearm was the Falcon Standard Issue Suppressed Pistol, which held 12 rounds in its magazine. All Nod troops at this time carried the Falcon as their sidearm. In addition, the troops were armed with a single time C4 charge, often referred to as, quote, TikTok C4. This could be placed around an enemy building, and once detonated, did noticeable damage to it. The charge was even capable of fully disabling a building if it was placed next to a master control terminal. Nod soldiers were led by Nod officers. Officers were better trained than enlisted soldiers, and had authority to radio high command for reinforcements. They stood out from the rest due to their lack of body armor and the red beret they wore on their head, not to be confused with the beret worn by commandos. Nod officers could arm themselves with a variety of weapons, though most of the time they used the Condor, a belt-fed minigun with a high rate of fire. Each belt held 100 rounds. The gun could cut down infantry with ease and even do damage to light vehicles, especially helicopters. Some of Nod's rocket soldiers also received new gear later in the war. This included extra armor padding on the legs and a giant vest. The vest looked more like a blast suit, as it was designed to withstand the pressure caused by nearby exploding munitions and shrapnel fragments. Though their rate of fire was lackluster, rocket soldiers compensated with the range and firepower of the new Locust rocket launcher. This automatic launcher was highly portable and held six rounds in each magazine. It was excellent at destroying armored ground vehicles and aircraft, especially gunships and transport helicopters, which could be taken down in one shot. Thanks to their body armor, the best way to take out a rocket soldier was by either aiming for their head or using other heavy weapons against them. Rocket soldiers were under the command of a rocket officer, who, like the standard Nod officer, had better combat training, could call high command for reinforcements, and wore a red beret. Other Nod troops, known as shotgun troopers, wore the same heavy armor. They used an 8 round pump action shotgun called the Vulture. This weapon was only reliable in extreme close range encounters. Thus, this trooper wore heavy armor that allowed them to get close to enemy infantry to engage them at their weapon's effective range. Flamethrower infantry continued to play an important role as anti-infantry units in Nod's army. Late in the war, some of these soldiers would receive fire-resistant suits, making them more resilient to the flames of their own weapons, thereby reducing friendly fire incidents. They were also armed with a newer, more compact flamethrower called the Dragonfly. While seemingly less powerful than the original flamethrowers, due to how long it took to kill an enemy soldier, most enemy units caught in the flame stream attempted to put out the fire around them, rather than shoot back at the flamethrower. Flamethrower infantrymen still had to get close enough to an enemy for their weapon to be effective. If the canister on the dragonfly was struck by a bullet, then it could explode, killing the flamethrower. While not combat units themselves, chefs that worked for the Brotherhood were known to have a flamethrower on hand to deal with any unexpected attacks by GDI commandos. The chefs were often hired out of the civilian workforce to serve in Nod facilities, with their initial loyalty being a bit stronger than the common civilian. Like the flamethrowers, some chemical warriors also received new and improved hazmat suits that were better resistant to Tiberium exposure. The standout feature of these suits was the red dome that completely encompassed the wearer's head. These chemical warriors were armed with a new weapon called the Venom Chemical Sprayer. This weapon released gaseous clouds combined with liquid sprays of volatile Tiberium, which could quickly kill most infantry units, and even do some damage to light vehicles. Sometimes, the victims of the sprayer wouldn't die, but instead be transformed into visceroids, attacking anyone in close proximity to them. Chemical Warriors had to close the distance to their targets for their chem sprayer to be effective, and so could potentially be killed before reaching their target. If hit by a stray bullet in the right spot, their weapon exploded in a cloud of toxic Tiberium, which could affect those around them. Nod Engineers saw their roles expanded later in the war. Instead of being employed to only capture enemy buildings, they were tasked with repairing any damage their own structures sustained. This was in addition to repairing damaged vehicles. 
To accomplish these tasks efficiently, some engineers were armed with a new experimental weapon called the Gizmo Repair Gun. The Gizmo Repair Gun fired a blue energy beam at a friendly vehicle or structure, repairing any damage it had sustained. In addition, the repair gun could disarm explosives and beacons. It could do minor damage to an enemy soldier, but in that situation, the engineer was better off switching to their sidearm. Some engineers would bring C4 explosives to destroy enemy buildings, rather than capture them. These engineers carried a timed C4 charge and two remote detonated charges. While more versatile, the non-engineers still needed protection from their fellow infantrymen, as the pistol they were given for personal protection was hardly a match against the more well-armed GDI soldiers. Technicians were civilians with technical skills, often hired or conscripted by the Brotherhood to maintain various buildings and operations. They typically wore a black and red suit. They had very little combat skill, if any at all. However, that did not stop the Brotherhood from sending some of them out onto the battlefield, armed with explosives and a repair gun. These combat technicians, as I'll call them, were equipped with two times C4 charges, two remote detonated charges, and six proximity C4 mines. These quote, feather proximity mines would be placed on the ground and detonate when an enemy soldier or vehicle got too close to them. The wide blast radius instantly killed infantrymen most of the time, making the mines useful in defending a base. The technician even used an advanced version of the gizmo repair gun, one that was capable of healing friendly soldiers. Those technicians who worked at the Brotherhood's secret facilities weren't armed at all wearing nothing but a lab coat and goggles. If they encountered a GDI soldier, these lab technicians immediately surrendered, though not before calling out for help from any nearby Nod soldiers. Chemical mixture is set. Help! Intruder! Help! The combat technicians could sometimes be convinced to surrender after starting a fight. The best example of this was when GDI Commando Havoc infiltrated a Nod cargo ship and sabotaged its engines, which were being monitored by Nod technicians. To further the development of Kane's Project Regenesis, the Brotherhood kidnapped a few of GDI's leading research scientists. They were put under the purview of the best troops in Nod's military, the Black Hand. The standard Black Hand soldier was an elite special forces unit with significant weight and power. They wore tight black suits over which were red armored vests, shin guards, and a helmet. These soldiers could be armed with a variety of weapons, including the Raptor automatic rifle, Vulture shotgun, and laser rifle. Most of the time, though, they were armed with the Pierce sniper rifle. The rifle fired armored piercing bullets from its four round detachable box magazine. It had a variable zoom scope with an integrated directional microphone. The rifle could instantly kill anyone with a headshot and would take most other infantry units down with a couple shots to the chest. The Black Hand had their own heavy infantry who had greater armor in comparison to Nod's standard heavy soldiers. They carried a variety of weapons, including the Locust Rocket Launcher, the Tarantula Laser Chain Gun, and Volt Auto Rifle. The last two weapons were some of the most powerful infantry weapons in Nod's arsenal at this time. The Tarantula was a chain-driven, portable micro obelisk module that provided high impact in a small package. With an incredibly high rate of fire and decent accuracy, it could cut down any infantry unit with ease, and even do considerable damage to light vehicles. So hot were the beams that they stunned infantry, which caused burn damage over time. The weapon's battery pack had enough charge for 100 blasts before it needed to be replaced with a new one. In terms of raw firepower, however, the Black Widow Volt Auto Rifle was superior. This experimental energy weapon launched continuous bolts of electricity at an enemy soldier, literally frying them to death. Its electricity stunned infantry units, so they couldn't fight back. Even vehicles eventually succumbed to the concentrated electric fire from this weapon. While powerful and portable, the weapon lacked range. Due to its experimental nature, it wasn't a common sight on the battlefield. Possibly the most dangerous of the Black Hand troops were their stealth soldiers. Equipped with a special stealth suit, these soldiers were practically invisible to the naked eye when not firing any weapons. This technology was a miniaturized version of that used in Nod's infamous stealth tanks. The only way for the average GDI soldier to detect these troops 
was to keep their eyes peeled for a shimmer effect whenever the stealth soldier moved. A few of these stealth soldiers could easily infiltrate a GDI base and wreak havoc, so long as an advanced guard tower wasn't around to detect them with its sensors. The stealth black hand soldiers were armed with the Firefly laser rifle. Like the Tarantula, this rifle also used a laser-powered portable obelisk module. However, the Firefly was more accurate over longer ranges and could only be fired in semi-automatic mode. Its battery pack had enough charge for 100 blasts. The Firefly made a distinct but loud sound when fired. While intimidating, this sound could potentially give away the Cell Soldier's position to the enemy. With the defeat and fracture of the Brotherhood of Nod at the end of the First Tiberium War, the organization lost access to much of its weapons and equipment. Over the years, though, the Brotherhood slowly rebuilt their arsenal, while its leaders fought amongst themselves. Tiberium continued its proliferation across the planet, with the Earth's natural environment gradually transformed into Tiberium-based flora and fauna. This caused the planet's atmosphere to become more toxic to humans, requiring soldiers to wear respirator masks and newly designed uniforms, especially when fighting within zones of the new Tiberium biome. Each faction's soldiers continued to maintain their own unique aesthetic. For the Brotherhood, this was most noticeable in the helmet, which looks to be inspired by the German M35 Stahlhelm. Unlike GDI's troops' helmets, whose translucent visor allowed one to easily see the wearer's whole face, the Nod Helmet featured a red T-shaped visor, giving the soldier a more menacing look. Armor, including chest plate, shoulder pads, arm guards, knee pads, and shin guards, were worn throughout the Nod soldier's body. There was also a belt, which held gun magazines, grenades, and other gadgets. After the Black Hand's new leader, Anton Slavik, managed to reunite the Brotherhood, Kane revealed to all that he was still alive, and officially began the Second Tiberium War against GDI. After their defeat in the First Tiberium War, the Brotherhood relied more heavily on their subterranean infrastructure to keep hidden from the watchful eyes of GDI. This meant downsizing their surface structures to keep a low profile. New recruits to the Brotherhood were still trained at the Hand of Nod building, which had now literally become a hand, with its fingers digging into the ground upon construction. For both GDI and the Brotherhood, light battle infantry became the mainstay, replacing the minigunners of the First War. While Nod made heavy use of cyborgs in their arsenal at this time, they were slow moving and more expensive to build, as well as vulnerable to EMP attacks. Thus, Nod still relied heavily on recruiting and training regular humans to fight on the battlefield, Light infantry were decent scouts, able to traverse uneven terrain without being slowed down, unlike Nod's ground vehicles. More importantly, when light and other infantry traversed across a veinhole monster's veins, they didn't agitate the creature. Most vehicles were incapable of performing such a feat, ending up damaged or destroyed by the veins. Infantry still needed to avoid the toxic Tiberium cloud that emitted from the monster's mouth, which could easily kill them. In terms of their primary weapon, the Tiberian Sun Manual states that Nod's Light Infantry used the same one as GDI, called the M16 Mark II Pulse Rifle. However, there are noticeable discrepancies with this weapon. In a couple of live-action cutscenes, Nod soldiers can be seen armed with a standard M16A2 rifle, with an underslung grenade launcher attached. In pre-rendered cutscenes, the soldiers are seen carrying a completely different gun. It doesn't seem like this gun is the Mark II Pulse Rifle either. It does not match the design of the one used by GDI's Light Infantry, which looks similar to the M41A Pulse Rifle from the Alien franchise. While I can understand Nod soldiers using any Mark II Pulse Rifles they captured from GDI, it doesn't seem like these were the standard rifles used by most Nod infantry. Perhaps it's Nod's own modified version of the Mark II, based off the ones they acquired from GDI. Evidence for this theory points to the fact that the Nod rifle makes the same firing sound as GDI's, so at the very least, it is a pulse rifle. Alternatively, it could be a unique Nod weapon whose true name was never established during the game's development. Rocket soldiers, or rocket infantry as they were now called, provided anti-armor and anti-air support for the light infantry using a shoulder-mounted launcher. While a single rocket soldier wasn't much of a threat, a squad of them could quickly take out a GDI Titan mech walker and destroy base structures. 
Due to the weight of the launcher they carried, and the extra heavy armor they wore, rocket infantry were slower moving compared to light infantry. Engineers continued to repair damaged Nod structures, as well as capture GDI ones whenever the opportunity presented itself. Nod engineers of the Second Tiberium War were only armed with a toolbox and additional equipment held in their large backpack. Because of all the equipment they carried, engineers were slow moving and vulnerable, so they needed to be escorted or transported via subterranean APCs. Engineers were the only ones with the knowledge to repair damaged or destroyed bridges, which opened up alternative routes for Nod forces to utilize on the battlefield. Just as GDI recruited muted ghost stalkers as mercenary commandos in their army, so too did the Brotherhood. Instead of ghost stalkers though, the Brotherhood recruited mutant hijackers. These hijackers wore the same uniform as Nod's other infantry, but without any of the extra armor, instead donning a trench coat. As the name suggests, the hijackers specialized in stealing vehicles. The hijacker would quickly run up to an enemy vehicle and eliminate the crew inside. The hijacked vehicle could then be used against its former owners. If the stolen vehicle was destroyed, the hijacker jumped out and either retreated or stole another nearby vehicle. Being a mutant, the hijacker could heal any wounds by resting in the middle of a Tiberium field. For covert operations, the Brotherhood made use of an operative called the Chameleon Spy. Wearing a suit, whose technology was based off the one worn by Black Hand Stealth Soldiers of the First War, the Chameleon Spy could move swiftly across the battlefield completely undetected. They wore the same helmet as the previous Nod infantry units, but no body armor, so as not to be weighed down. These spies were completely unarmed, so if they were discovered by enemy mobile sensor arrays, they were completely defenseless. Besides providing scouting information, the Chameleon Spy could infiltrate an enemy building and steal vital information that could be used by the Brotherhood. Another unique soldier of the Brotherhood was the Toxin Soldier. Like the Chameleon Spy, Toxin Soldiers were only used to accomplish a couple of special operations missions. They wore a seemingly bulky uniform and were armed with a weapon that could fire various munitions. The first was a Tranquilizer, which, in an alternative timeline, they used to subdue and capture GDI Commander Michael McNeil's brother, Jake McNeil. The second munition was a Phosphorus Round that would instantly set enemy infantry units on fire. The third round was a dart filled with a drug that would brainwash the victim, causing them to do whatever the Brotherhood wanted for a short time. This dart was put to effective use during the mission Seeds of Destruction, where Toxin soldiers brainwashed GDI civilians to enrage Tiberian wildlife at a location known as the Genesis Pit. The enraged wildlife went out and destroyed the civilian villages, and eventually took out the local GDI base. The drug in the dart was also poisonous, as once the brainwashing effect wore off, the victim died. When Nod's computer-assisted biologically augmented lifeform, Cabal, rebelled against humanity, all cyborgs in Nod's arsenal came under its control. Being Nod's primary heavy infantry and commando units, this is a major blow to the organization's infantry divisions. All the generals of Nod's inner circle were killed at the start of Cabal's rebellion, except for Anton Slavik, leader of the Black Hand. The Black Hand always mistrusted cyborgs and kept them out of their cult. Because of this, the Black Hand had their own heavy infantry soldiers, known as the Elite Cadre. To combat the cyborgs now under Cabal's control, four of Nod's standard infantry were quickly inducted into the Elite Cadre, boosting their ranks. The Elite Cadre were armed with the same pulse weapon as the cyborgs, and wore better armor than Nod's standard light infantry. The same armor, in fact, that was worn by the Toxin soldiers, though it still wasn't as strong as the cyborgs. Regardless, the Elite Cadre proved integral in helping the Brotherhood fight back against the cyborg armies of Cabal, and working with GDI to bring the AI's reign of terror to an end. Cabal's cyborg rebellion was yet another major blow to the Brotherhood, Having lost their leader Kane at the hands of GDI, the organization was on the verge of once again devolving into infighting. Anton Slavik held the organization together for a time, but with his assassination, the organization fractured again. The Black Hand itself, under the new leadership of one brother Marcion, exiled themselves to the Australian outback. Unbeknownst to many in the Brotherhood, Kane had not been killed, but greatly injured, spending a significant amount of time healing in stasis. 
By the time he'd emerged, Kane found the Brotherhood once again fractured. Determined to reunify and rebuild it, Kane focused on recruiting new members from Earth's Yellow Zones. Yellow Zones made up roughly 50% of the planet's surface, and were where most of the human population resided. In these zones, subsistence living and Tiberian contamination were a fact of life. Occasional humanitarian efforts from GDI-controlled Blue Zones provided some food, water, and aid, but the inhabitants of Yellow Zones were largely ignored by GDI. This caused a great deal of resentment, which Kane exploited by convincing many residents to join the Brotherhood of Nod. The greatest example of this was the Rio Insurrection, where, through his new AI Legion, Kane convinced the local populace of Rio de Janeiro to rebel against the GDI garrison. The Rio Insurrection was the first step on the path to reunification, a 13-year journey that culminated with the destruction of the GDS's Philadelphia space station and the outbreak of the Third Tiberium War. As in the past, all new recruits for the Brotherhood received training at a hand of Nod. Inspired by the original structure of the First Tiberium War, the design was changed again. This was most evident by the hand stretching up from the back of the building, grasping a red sphere that represented the Earth. One had to be careful not to stand too close to that part of the structure, for if it was destroyed or demolished, the globe would fall to the ground and roll a short distance, crushing any infantrymen in its path. The Hand of Nod is not just a barracks and armory for Nod infantry. It is also a place of learning for militants and rocket troopers, a sanctuary for fanatics as they perform their departure rituals, and an interrogation center for confessors as they extract secrets from enemy captives and keep the hearts of our own troops pure and true. Saboteurs and commandos may also choose to bunk down on the Hand of Nod prior to launching their secret operations. Most of the troops in Nod's military during the events leading up to, and through the Third Tiberium War, were known as militants. Down with GDI! The Brotherhood's elite soldiers, like the Black Hands or the Shadows, are highly capable, but relatively few in number. If the elite soldier is the Brotherhood's scalpel, to be used with devastating precision, then the militants and rocket troopers and their millions are like a great warhammer or battle axe. Their power comes from their sheer numbers, and we continue to recruit them by the hundreds of thousands from the desperate populations of the Yellow Zones. We give them enough training, weapons, and equipment to make them a vast blunt instrument of war for the Brotherhood. The standard militant squad consisted of nine soldiers, who typically wore grey civilian clothing consisting of pants, a hoodie, and goggles. They also wore a backpack which carried extra ammunition and supplies. Many militants were even outfitted with the same gear worn by Nod's troops during the Second Tiberium War. As for their primary weapon, some militants appeared to use the same gun as GDI's riflemen around the time of the Third Tiberium War, called the GD-2 rifle. Other militants, particularly those wearing Second Tib War armor, were armed with a different kind of unnamed weapon. Interestingly, an old faction feature article on IGN involving a couple of the game's developers mentioned that the militant squads trained using the Gal-3 Eliminator from the First Tiberium War. As a reminder, the Eliminator was originally portrayed by the Calico M951. Perhaps this unnamed weapon provided an updated visual look to the Eliminator. Alternatively, the unnamed rifle could be a newer version of the Pulse Rifle used by the Nod Light Infantry during the Second War. Though I'm doubtful of that, since the Pulse Rifle had a unique firing sound, which is different to those of the Militant's guns, which sound the same as the GD-2 rifle. Due to their lack of training, a single non-militant squad would be quickly cut down by a GDI Rifleman squad. This is why the Brotherhood always employed their militants in large numbers, opting for a quantity versus quality approach. Militants also served as distractions or cannon fodder to draw GDI's attention away from Nod's more advanced infantry units. Rocket militants were chosen based on former military or partisan experience. We've got the rockets! They were armed with airburst rocket launchers, capable of destroying aircraft, armored ground vehicles, and base structures. Militant rocket squads easily stood out from the rest due to the red ponchos they wore, along with white bandanas that covered the lower part of their faces. Out in the open, both kinds of militants didn't last long in a fight with GDI infantry units in equal numbers. Because of this, it was important for Nod militants to acquire cover by garrisoning nearby abandoned buildings. In order to increase the effectiveness of their militant squads, a Nod commander sometimes assigned a confessor to lead each one. 
The Confessors were the warrior priests of Nod. Identifiable by their elongated helmet and cape, the Confessors inspired nearby militants to fight more ferociously in the name of Cain. In addition, they carried hallucinogenic grenades, which would confuse affected enemy infantry, causing friendly fire incidents. When not on the battlefield, Confessors stayed housed at a secret shrine, or interrogated prisoners at a hand of Nod. Green glowing lanterns, possibly caused by Tiberium inside, were set up at the shrine's entrance to signify the presence of Confessors among the ranks of a Nod commander's militants. One of the Brotherhood's most dangerous weapons was loyalty, and the most devout of Nod's followers were called Fanatics. Our lives for Cain! Behold the noblest of our brothers. They shall suffer not the dread of this meager existence, nor shall they tolerate the tyranny of GDI. Through their sacrifice, they bring liberation to each and every one of us who struggles on in their glorious wake. They will cleanse the land of oppression with the flames of their very souls, as they deliver Cain's word and fire. Fanatics were equipped with volatile explosive devices that detonated when in close proximity to enemy forces. They moved fast in squads of five and were impossible to suppress, so had to be eliminated before reaching their targets. The explosives they wore had a decent blast radius, able to wipe out squads of enemy infantry, destroy ground vehicles, and break any base structures crumbling to the ground. As in the past, infantry units would slowly be poisoned when passing through a Tiberium field, resulting in death if they were unable to pass through the field quickly. Thanks to Knott's continued experiments with Tiberium, they were able to create a Tiberium elixir, which could be infused into militant soldiers and fanatics. The elixir was concocted at a secret shrine. When green smoke emanated from the shrine's chimney, the elixir was ready for use. Once given this infusion, the affected Nod infantry had their metabolisms heightened, increasing their movement speed. They were also able to take an extra bullet or two before dying. Most importantly, this infusion enabled the troops to pass through a Tiberium field unharmed. GDI soldiers knew they were going up against Tiberium-infused Nod soldiers by the green clouds that emanated from their bodies. After the Second Tiberium War, the Brotherhood chose to spend more time training their engineers to further expand their role within the organization. The Brotherhood has entrusted me. Nod's elite society of combat engineers, known as the Saboteurs, include some of the most loyal and brilliant clerics. Saboteurs use their special talents and skills to take over key enemy structures. Saboteurs can also rig certain civilian structures and bridges with proximity detonated explosive charges. A saboteur is made by years of training in science and in the dark arts of sabotage, infiltration, appropriation, and hijacking. The saboteurs wore a black suit with a glass dome encompassing their entire head. The saboteur's right arm had a large claw attached to it useful for handling hazardous materials or other devices. As mentioned, saboteurs continued the tradition of capturing neutral and enemy structures, as well as repairing Nod's damaged ones. These repairs extended to destroyed bridges, too. Most noticeably, saboteurs were given explosives, which could be used to booby-trap neutral structures. As soon as a GDI engineer or squid assimilator entered the building, the bomb would detonate, bringing down the entire structure. As with most units that specialize in engineer-related tasks, the saboteurs were not very athletic, and therefore slow-moving. However, those saboteurs that were part of the Marked of Cain could have their human legs replaced with cybernetic ones, enabling them to reach their destination faster. The assembling of these cybernetic legs was done at the Secret Shrine, which would have two stone obelisks placed at the main entrance to denote the completion of this upgrade. The saboteurs weren't the only ones who could obtain these cybernetic legs. Another unit, exclusive to the Marked of Cain, called the Tiberium Trooper, used them to move across the battlefield and deliver liquid death to the enemies of the Brotherhood. Baptize these heretics! The Tiberium Trooper was the revived version of Nod's chemical warriors from the First War. This was the result of the capture and coercion of GDI's leading research scientist, Dr. Giraud, who went to work for the Brotherhood. The cybernetically enhanced Tiberium Troopers wore suits that protected them from the harmful effects of Tiberium exposure. They carried two large tanks of liquid Tiberium on their back, which were attached to the sprayer via a hose. 
Their sprayer weapons were most effective at eliminating enemy infantry, especially those that had attempted to take up shelter inside a neutral structure. The volatile concoction of Tiberium was even capable of eroding base structures. The sprayers could do the same to enemy vehicles, though not as effectively. Due to the presence of Tiberium troopers, the Marked of Cain didn't have Nod's Black Hand infantry in their arsenal. The Black Hand has arrived. Within a year of his break with Nod, Marcion had organized his followers into a disciplined theocratic army, the quote, New Black Hand. Dedicated to spreading truth and purity of the Tiberium prophecy, this new Black Hand no longer kept to the shadows, but were overt and ruthless when dealing with their enemies. This was most noticeable with Marcion's heavy infantry, who were clad from head to toe in heavy black armor and wore a red cape. Well trained, loyal, and supernaturally tough, these Black Hand forces were armed with flamethrowers that would incinerate infantry divisions and quickly clear out garrison structures. Flamethrowers had a staggering psychological effect that sometimes went beyond their superlative combat effectiveness. In addition, the Black Hand's labs managed to create a form of concentrated fuel that permitted extended combat operations. This new mixture must have involved Tiberium in some respect, as the fuel tanks on the backs of the Black Hand soldiers had a noticeable green color. The heat of the flames was so intense, it could melt structures and even destroy light vehicles. Even more impressive was that this fuel could be further improved, becoming known as Purifying Flame. This mixture was concocted at the Black Hand's own secret shrine. This fuel upgrade was complete when a small cylindrical fuel tank was attached to the outside of the shrine. On the Black Hand soldiers themselves, their green tanks would be replaced with blue ones, and, more importantly, the flames emitted from their weapons were blue. Structures exposed to this heat quickly collapsed, and both light and medium armored vehicles combusted under the extreme temperatures. While Black Hand soldiers typically operated within their own squads, it was sometimes beneficial to have a single disciple assigned to the Black Hand's other infantry squads. This included the Confessor Cabals and Militant Rockets. Orders for the disciples' appointments amongst other infantry units would be brought up at the Secret Shrine, with glowing orange lanterns placed at the shrine's entrance. After Cain brought Brother Marcion back into the fold of the Reunited Brotherhood, the heavy infantry of the Black Hand supported various non-divisions deployed on the front lines during the Third Tiberium War. Even without access to purifying flames, or disciples, Black Hand infantry were still Nod's most elite frontline combat troops. We're in control here. While confessors from the Black Hand would be assigned to Nod's other divisions, the majority of them remained within the Black Hand itself acting as the sub-faction's standard frontline infantry units. An entire squad of these most holy of Nod soldiers was called a Confessor Cabal. Guidance for the masses. While the Nod Confessor has been an increasingly common sight on the battlefield since the Second Tiberium War, it was not until the establishment of Brother Marcion's post-Slavic Black Hand that these armored priests were considered effective combatants in their own right. Seeking to bolster his own standing as a pure religious figure, untainted by the purported heresy of his predecessor, Marcion took the radical step of replacing his standard Nod militant advance guard with regiments of combat-ready confessors, armed, as always, with machine guns and psychotropic hallucinogenic grenades. All the better to spread his word, and put his enemies to the sword. The primary weapon used by the confessors was a modified AK rifle. Instead of a single barrel, the weapon had three rotary barrels. It had a side scope mount as well. The gun had a rapid fire rate, which enabled it to cut down enemy infantry quickly. AJ, one of Kane's intelligence officers during the Third Tiberium War, was occasionally seen armed with this weapon. When confessors needed more powerful weapons to deal with their enemies, they switched out their rotary weapons for charged particle beams. These weapons fired green-colored particle beams, which did increased damage to anything and anyone standing in the Confessor's way. Confessor Cabals were, of course, armed with hallucinogenic grenades, which, as previously mentioned, released a gas that caused the affected soldier to hallucinate and think that his allies were enemies. This caused catastrophic friendly fire incidents, with entire squads turning on each other. The gas from these grenades affected Nod's own soldiers as well, so care had to be taken when throwing them. Confessor Cabals were inspiring to other Nod infantry squads around them, encouraging them to fight harder and remain steadfast in the name of Cain.
For covert operations behind enemy lines, the Brotherhood utilized shadow teams. The Wings of Nod. Trained using many of the same techniques that were used to shape the ancient ninja, the Nod Shadows are elite special forces troops capable of infiltrating well behind enemy lines. Shadows employ stealth, carry rapid-fire weapons that are deadly against enemy infantry, and are equipped with collapsible powered hang gliders that give them the ability to fly. The most powerful weapon carried by a shadow is a bomb incorporating a new type of explosive. Shadows can use these bombs to destroy enemy structures with a single blast. The chemical composition for the explosive was obtained by espionage, stolen right out of a GDI lab working on next generation chemical explosives. Due to the importance of being swift and stealthy, shadow teams didn't wear any armor, and with the exception of a red cowl, wore black and gray clothing. At least, that's what the endgame unit looks like, as the sidebar cameo of the unit shows them wearing a red-domed helmet around their head. They were armed with dual rapid-fire pistols with scope attachments, which easily took out enemy infantry units, but were useless against anything else. Thankfully for the shadow teams, they could just use their explosives to level any buildings. In addition to explosives, shadow teams were given small pyramid-shaped artillery beacons, when deployed and activated, these beacons sent out a signal that not Spectre artillery vehicles could lock onto and bombard from a long range. While stealth teams could move quickly on the ground, they always tried to make use of their gliders to get across canyons or surpass enemy base defenses. This worked, so long as there were no stealth detecting anti-air turrets or units stationed at the base. Shadow teams were unable to defend themselves when gliding, making it essential for them to remain undetected. The gliders also allowed the shadow teams to escape an enemy base after wreaking havoc within. Once a Nod commander established a secret shrine at their base, they gained the ability to call in a shadow strike team. This was a couple squads of veteran shadow teams who would fly in on their gliders from outside the battlefield, deploying anywhere the Nod commander wanted. While shadow teams may have been Nod's elite stealth soldiers, they paled in comparison to the organization's commandos. Nice day for a kill. The Commando is the most feared soldier on the battlefield, armed with the deadliest of anti-infantry weapons and Tiberium-based explosives that can collapse a building in a matter of seconds, the Commando is a one-woman army. She is also ruthless, having survived a training program that one could only describe as sadistic. Around the time of the Third Tiberium War, the Brotherhood of Nod had developed a rigorous training regimen specifically for its female volunteers. Of those who survived, a small number graduated to become commandos. While seemingly dressed down for combat, they were more than capable of holding their own against multiple infantry squads. The commando's hair was dyed red, and some could even be seen wearing an eye patch. Let's get acquainted. Their portable stealth generators allowed them to remain invisible to the naked eye when standing still, only detectable by advanced sensors. They were armed with a fast-firing laser pistol, which could one-shot practically any soldier. Energy cells used to reload the pistol were carried on a bandolier wrapped around the commando's body. Like the commandos of the past, Nod's Third War ones were equipped with explosives to demolish buildings. These explosives also had a secondary use, able to be planted on the legs of a GDI mech walker or Skrin tripod. When detonated, the walkers collapsed to the ground in a matter of seconds. Here's my card. Those commandos who were trained within the Black Hand were considered the best of the best. While they stayed true to the Black Hand's beliefs, by avoiding the use of a personal stealth generator, the commandos had by far the most experience due to their heroic training. In addition, Black Hand commanders could deploy up to two commandos on the battlefield at the same time. Just my type. Notable uses of the commandos by the Brotherhood up to and during the Third Tiberium War included stealing blueprints related to GDI's Ion Cannon Network in Johannesburg, South Africa, infiltrating the GDI naval base at Hampton Roads, seeking the aircraft carrier GDS Pate, and helping to retrieve components of the liquid Tiberium bomb after its transport crashed in Slovenia. There was even an instance where a commando aided a saboteur in infiltrating Kane's Temple Prime in Sarajevo, an operation conducted by the AI Legion under the orders of Kane's abbess, Alexa Kovacs. Finally, commandos were integral in supporting Brotherhood operations in Italy against both GDI and the Skrin. While the Brotherhood of Nod's forces were severely diminished by the end of the Third Tiberium War, 
the organization was successful in claiming the last remaining Skrin Tower, Threshold 19. Cain believed that within this tower were the secrets to the Brotherhood's future. Secrets that could lead to the invention of new technologies for the organization, including new weapons, armor, and equipment for all their faithful soldiers. From their new, eager recruits to their most loyal, steadfast veterans. This memorial stands as a symbol of eternal life in remembrance of the dead. These brave souls sacrificed their lives to strengthen the Brotherhood so we might live on and carry their names proudly with us. We remember also our ancestors, who came before us and gave us life. Blessed be these names, for they are our kin, our blood. May they stand proudly forever and in time become ancestral themselves. Remember your mourning moment of silence for the lost but not forgotten. <laughs>